Good evening and welcome to Bronx Talk. Tonight, it's the debate for the 13th City Council District that includes the Bronx neighborhoods of Throgs Neck, City Island, Pelham Parkway, Morris Park, Pelham Bay, Pelham Gardens, Schuylerville, Country Club, Locust Point, and uh, Westchester Square, as well as parts of Allerton and Van Nest. Tonight's program is presented in partnership with the League of Women Voters of the City of New York, a nonpartisan political organization that advocates for informed and active participation in government and works to increase understanding of major public policy issues. Election Day is Tuesday, November 7th. Early voting going on right now through Sunday, November 5th. For more information, including deadlines for absentee ballots and finding your polling place, visit vote. Dot NYC. Now let's meet the candidates. There are two candidates on the ballot. The incumbent is Democrat Marjorie Velasquez, who is the chair of the council's Consumer Worker Protection Committee. Nice to have you with us. And running on the Republican and conservative lines is Christy Marmorado, a specialist in women's health at Greenwich Hospital in Connecticut. She has worked as an x-ray technician for 24 years, 16 of which were in the East Bronx, where this District Lies. Nice to see you, Ms. Marmorado. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. Candidates in uh, tonight's debate, I will direct the question to one candidate. That candidate will have one minute to respond, and then the opposing candidate will also have one minute to respond. The moderator, that's me, reserves the right to ask follow-up questions and also to allow for rebuttals and dialogue. Please note, no opening statements, but at the end of the program, each candidate will have one minute to offer a concluding comment. One final note before we begin, the questions on tonight's programs include those submitted by the candidates themselves. So candidates, nice to have you with us. Um, Ms. Velasquez, you get uh, the first question, but this first question really has a part for both of you. Um, I, I thought I'd start with endorsements and the idea of who's endorsing who. Um, and so we'll, uh, I'll ask both of you in essence, and you both can then respond. Uh, Ms. Velasquez, the question is, um, you've um, been openly endorsed by DSA legislators like uh, Congressman Jamal Bowman and former Senator Alessandro Biaggi, claiming to be a moderate. Are you a moderate Democrat, yet accepting those uh, endorsements from uh, Democratic Socialists? You could be a moderate and believe your beliefs and understand that an endorsement is just that. It's an endorsement for my work, not for delivering for my community. And their endorsements were actually before I became an elected. And it's because during the height of the pandemic, it was going door to door, making sure families had not only pantry items, but also PPE and food to sustain themselves. And it was with partnership with Alessandro Biaggi that I was able to deliver foods to all of City Island. So that's a record of achievement. So I don't subscribe to DSA and certainly not to their beliefs, but I'm willing to work with anyone who has an opportunity to deliver to my community. And just to be clear, you you were not- I am um, not DSA. Let's you, be very not like DSA 100%. and you left the Progressive Caucus in the City Council, so you do yes. see yourself as a moderate. Correct. Okay, um, Ms. Marmorado, a similar kind of question, and it's relate. you can respond to that if you'd like. You accepted an endorsement from, from someone directly tied to the Proud Boys, um, do you support their actions on uh, January 6th, accept the results of the 2020 uh, presidential election? Is that endorsement problematic for you? First of all, this is a ridiculous statement. The person in question is absolutely not a proud boy. He is a veteran and has done so much for our community. So it's just lies. Coming Although he did say he was uh, with he, the Proud Boys he, in a video. I saw. He did not say he was a proud boy in the video. So he is not a part of the Proud Boys. I asked for the membership card. He couldn't produce one. Um, it's just a ridiculous statement put out by the media. That is okay. not true. I do not affiliate with Proud Boys, insurrectionists, anything like that. People that break the law need to go to jail. Okay, fair enough. Uh, did you want to respond at all to the other um, statement or we'll just move on? Um, she does have endorsements uh, from a number of members of the Progressive Caucus that are coming up to campaign for her, and that is a little concerning as a community. They are de defund the police, and they're also into overdevelopment. And if you have people coming up here campaigning for you and with you, seconds. this is what you're gonna end up having a community look like. Okay, you, you get the final word. Do you have anything else to say or we'll move on? Yeah, no, I can totally attest to the fact that just because a Progressive Caucus member comes here, it's actually for my record of achievements. And a Progressive Caucus member but you're afraid of having 
uh, differences of opinion because, look, they know my stance for funding the police and they've certainly seen my record investment in this community of over $500 million dollars over two dozen officers for the district and certainly patrol cars and ex auxiliary vehicles for my district, which they still all know and it's very open and they still come and support because at the end of the day, it's what I've delivered to this community and Time. continue to deliver. Thank you very much. Um, let's talk, let's spend a lot of time talking about housing and development. Ms. Marmorado, um, there are more than 86,000 homeless people, including almost 30,000 homeless children sleeping each night in New York City's shelter system. We're also wrestling with a crisis of more than 60,000 migrants. So here's the question. Does every city council district have a responsibility to help solve these issues and address it with housing? And if so, how and where in the 13th council district can that be done? I feel that we definitely should take on our responsibility and our share of housing individuals. We have students at PS83 or homeless students living in shelters. No child should not have a home and have to go to school on top of that. Life is difficult. I look forward to helping find locations that the community would like to put affordable housing. But the affordable housing issue starts and ends with the city and how much they pay for vouchers within the city. They, people are becoming too dependent. 30 the, seconds. the middle class is going to end up leaving the community because they cannot afford these apartment rates that the city is putting out. They need to start lowering their rates or everybody's going to be completely dependent on the city for housing and it's going to turn into a socialist society. So at the moment, you, you're not sure of where you might recommend that there be... You um, would like specific locations? Whatever your well, thoughts We're going to have a ton of housing coming to Mars Park when this Metro North station is going to be built. So there's a whole strip of buildings that can be made right over in that area. Available. Thank okay. Um, Ms. Velasquez, your thought? Certainly, uh, I have and I continue to advocate for housing within our community. But let's be real. It has to be for us by us. And when uh, development, and let's be frank and honest about the Bruckner development, when it came into the district and how it was presented, it wasn't for our community. And that's why I stood firm to deliver what the community was asking for. So it is 100 units for seniors with wraparound services and security. It is 25 units dedicated to Please. our veterans. It is affordable housing ownership. That's right. Our district deserves to have housing ownership for opportunities to create generational wealth. And I fought for that and will continue to fight for housing that is for our community and made by seconds. us through union. We've asked you about this uh, on the program before, but I, I know it's an issue in this campaign. So we'll, we'll restate it. Let's talk about that Bruckner rezoning. You reversed course. You eventually supported it at the 11th hour. Is there a trust issue there that people say, well, wait a minute, she says she's against this or she's for this, but then she changed her mind at the last minute? I think certainly people want to control the narrative and saying that I flipped, but in the reality is that I was continuous in my opposition because it never reflected the community until the, the last presentation, which back once again, it is union jobs, right? Our community deserves to have livable wages. Our community deserves to have priority in those jobs, and that's seconds. what I fought for. And it is delivering housing for our most vulnerable to stay in our district, which is our seniors, our veterans, and certainly to create generational wealth, which we did with the home ownership component. And it's infrastructure Time. that has to be addressed, which the administration agreed to. Um, Ms. Marmorado, I'm sure you have something you want to say about that issue. You still lied. You still lied to the community. You, I have still have not met one person in this district that wanted the Bruckner upzoning other than you and the mayor. Other than that, I've not met anybody. That depends yes. because let, you let, only let live in your silo. Let's let and we'll give yes, you a go chance. Ahead. Go ahead. And, how, and bringing jobs, we can get jobs in other ways. These people, are, the developers who had this changed, are bankrupt. They are seconds. going to sell the project to somebody else, and we will have no control over senior housing, over veterans housing, which I also heard that the but veterans that's not housing how projects was, works. And, and I wish huh. you would educate so yourself. Let, just finish your sentence, and then uh, she'll get educate a chance myself. To okay. Anyway, these people do not have money to go to build the project, and it's going to wind up in the hands of somebody else that can turn this into a whole different story in our community. Um, so that would be a, a question for you then. <laughs> Is, are you um, sure that these developers are going to build the project, or do you think they're going to hand it off to somebody else? 
And then you can certainly respond to her um, comments. Well, certainly the negotiations were not solely with the developers. It is with the administration. And what we're saying and what is in writing is the community benefits that are going to result out of this, right? It is not only a dedicated traffic study to deliver the proper infrastructure and the transit that is needed for that area, but it is also a school study to make sure that we're providing the quality education for our students that will be coming into that area. And third of all, and most importantly, yes, union jobs matter. Our folks matter. Our carpenters, which are living in that district, the majority of them matter, and they fought for that. So let's not discuss and dismiss the various voices that call me every day, like seniors asking for housing and thanking me for that. 15. Let's not dismiss the voices of black and brown in my community who have been asking for home ownership opportunities. Let's not dismiss those voices because that's what's happened time and time again uh, before me. And guess what? I'm here to recognize those voices, whether you want to see them and hear them or not. Time. Uh, you can have a minute. Uh, she had a minute there if you'd like to add. All more. I've heard out of the whole thing was that they will be getting housing and jobs. I did not hear anything about uh, education. How are we benefiting? You negotiated a deal. You never said anything about education. And traffic studies, What do you? There, have you been there since on three o'clock on a school day? Do you know what the traffic is like? There are triple parked cars. Now you're bringing in buildings with cars with no parking. It's going to be a disaster. I lived over in the area for two years. So you've read the presentation, because if you read the pre presentation, the last proposal actually has parking, but Clearly, it's not about parking, but you just mentioned that it's it not, has no parking, and you also no mentioned additional that there's parking. no You're talk about need, are you going to let me talk? Or are you going to just talk to yourself? Come on, Gary. Let's, 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 let's let Ms. Um, Marmorado finish her statement, and uh, then we'll move on. Go ahead, Ms. Marmorado, finish your statement. There is limited parking in the community, even with cars be, having parking spaces for these buildings. There are still other. Every car has two. Every house has two cars per household. So there are going to be more cars than that are going to fit in these buildings or in these allocated spaces. Plus, the traffic is insane on these one-way streets between Crosby and Tremont Avenue. That's what I'm saying. What traffic studies have been done? Where does it show this? Do they go at 3 o'clock on a, a weekday to see these people drop, okay. picking their children up? Thank you. Um, let's, let's just talk about Metro North. You mentioned it, um, Ms. Marmorado. Uh, four Metro North stations are coming uh, in addition to the expanded commuter options. Uh, what should be done to maximize the benefit to the community? There needs to be a lot to be done to maximize the benefits to the community. We are losing a lot of parking again as well. And I know the whole purpose of bringing the train station is, is so we can reduce cars. But as of right now, we are fully reliant on automobiles, the people that work at the hospital, the people that live in the community. It's going to take a time before it gets there. We need to allocate municipal parking lots. We need to figure out a place where these individuals are going to go, especially with the upzoning plans. 30 seconds. They're going to remove two of the parking lots within the Joe Kobe campus. I already cannot park on my street during the day, during the week, when these people are parking all along my, my block and in my neighborhood. Okay. okay thank you. Um, Ms. Velasquez, you have 30 seconds. What was the question again? Uh, the question is what benefits... Uh, do we need to? Uh, what do we need to do to maximize the benefits for the community with the Metro North stations coming? So certainly, uh, what I facilitated within the community are various Zoom calls uh, and in-person meetings. There are two different stations. It's not just Morris Park. There is a Park Chester Van Ness station as well, and it is uh, working with my other electeds. Um, Delivering seconds. community centers, delivering schools, delivering proper infrastructure, uh, delivering, um, actually converting Morris Park Station into the life science uh, hub that it deserves to be and delivering quality health care for a community Time. that has been experiencing so much disinvestment. Ms. Marmorado, you get the final word on this. I also don't understand if there are four train stations. Why is it that the two within our district are the only ones that are going to be allocated 3,000 apartments? at each station. Why isn't it not spread out through the four? Okay, thank you very much. Um, Ms. Velasquez, um, let's move ahead to a different type of development. Uh, the Trump uh, golf links um, were sold to Bally's. Uh, they have a desire to get a license to build a casino at that location. Do you like the idea? Do you support or oppose the idea? 
Well, the license to take over the golf course I am excited about. Uh, I'm happy that it affords an opportunity for folks in my community to finally use it. Um, and it was a lot of discussion and I'm really proud of that achievement and to deliver that to the district. Certainly, uh, Bally's is interested in applying for the casino license, but that application has not been finalized. And certainly there is a process uh, that has to go through. And when that process starts up, I look forward to seeing what they can deliver to the community and how they engage the community to so support their application. But it's billions of dollars into the district. And certainly I'd like to see more of the community involvement. Thank you very much, Ms. Marmorado. There is no billions of dollars coming into our district. 80% of the money that we will receive will go towards the state, 20% is going to go to the city, and then the city will decide what they want to do to their money with the money. We were not directly getting any money. It is going to be a environmental disaster. There are 11,000 cars that drive over that bridge every single day. If you're going to create a, a venue that's going to bring in hundreds of thousands of people, how many more cars are going to come to our area? There is no parking. There is the highways seconds. are not set up and we have the highest rates of asthma in our borough. What is that going to do to the environment? You're also talking about taking away parkland. We don't deserve that. They need to redevelop the area and make a beautiful um, boardwalk with some restaurants, something that families seconds. can use, not gamblers, not people who are going there to look to lose their money in their paychecks or look to win money. It's not it's just not what the Bronx needs. Um, now that Bally's owns it, I'm um, just following up. Do you think that they would do something like turn it into a park or expand the parking option? It doesn't sound like that's the, the plan for them, right. but it would so, be beautiful. Have you ever gone over there? I've seen it, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Velasquez, you get the final word on this. Well, certainly going and, and being in Ferry Point Park and understanding a Ferry Point Park is more than just the golf course. It's actually uh, where the ferry is. And I fought hard to open that ferry. But when we look at the surrounding areas, there is disinvestment. That soccer field that every weekend is filled with so many families uh, that want to play are playing literally on rocks. So it's working with Bally's to make sure that they invest not only in the golf course, but the surrounding area of all of Ferry Point Park to deliver for our communities. And I'm happy to have facilitated that. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Marmorado, um, let's talk about um, another issue in that area that involves uh, transportation. I guess this will be the final development question. Should City Island uh, get a ferry terminal? No, I don't think City Island should get a ferry terminal. I have not met one person who is supporting that type of project. They say that the streets are too small. They can't absorb any parking, additional parking. And they don't think that it's going to bring enough people into City Island that they would benefit from it. They feel that the people that I've spoken to felt like Orchard Beach would be a better location, especially with parking and some type of shuttle service back and forth to City Island would be greatly benefited. To that. I know I've been involved in a number of the dialogue is a shuttle service from Orchard Beach. You probably need anyway so that people can park there and, of course, come on a Saturday night aside from the, the ferry terminal. Uh, your thoughts, um, Ms. Velasquez? Certainly, I've invested in Orchard Beach, and I'd love to continue that investment through having a ferry service there. You think it should be at Orchard Beach? Sure, <laughs> certainly, uh, because Orchard Beach will be a year-round destination for families, and so certainly allowing folks to come in through a ferry service there and having a year-round bus service dedicated to Orchard Beach are on my priority to deliver to the community. First, let's get Orchard Beach up and running and just letting folks know there's That's a request true. for a proposal for the shops now at the pavilion, so if you you have a restaurant, seconds. a store, please apply because it's very important to have you participate. Okay, you get the final word if you'd like it, Ms. Marmorado. No. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's talk about crime and policing, another leading issue in not only this campaign, probably every campaign in New York City right now. Um, so I guess we're up to you, uh, Ms. Velasquez. How do we do better in fighting crime in the 13th Council District in the Bronx and, of course, the city of New York? Uh, right now, the, the last report, actually, the Bronx Times ran it that said um, major crimes are down uh, slightly. Um, uh, I think there were um, uh, auto theft was up, but still a little crime is still too much. What, what are your thoughts? I think it's multiple avenues. Certainly, this is why I've been endorsed by the Police Benevolence Association, because of my record investment, not only in uh, the force, right? So making sure that, like I said before, over $500 million into the police, uh, dedicated t over 20 uh, 
officers to the precincts, but also bringing back morale, talking about applying, having this as a career for our folks, because we need to do all. It's also making sure that we're funding the precincts through community groups too, seconds. allowing folks to understand that police and public safety go hand in hand and that we need to not only respect our officers, but certainly respect the work and providing um, training facilities. And I'm happy to have invested a lot of money into Rodman's next training facilities for our officers. Um, Ms. Marmorado, crime and policing. So um, I support the NYPD. I will do everything I can to have more patrol cars overnight. I will do everything to get more cops on the beat. We need a bigger presence in our community, and that's what we're lacking. Um, it's, it's sad to have to go to my car, open the door, and realize that my child's backpack was stolen out of my car. And it's unfortunately because I didn't report the crime. And it was a, a problem on my end. But there's a lot of undetected crime happening within our community. I know you said the the crime numbers are down, but there's a lot of stuff that's not being re reported. And I'd also like to ask, if you brought two dozen officers to the community, was this before or after 30 left the 49th precinct and about 20 left the 45th precinct? Okay, so we'll give you 30 seconds to respond to that and then... Um Certainly, I'm not responsible for attrition, but I understand the needs of the community, and it is adding more and more officers. I've been doing this work even before I was an elected fighting for Rodman's Neck, which is the shooting range that NYPD uses, and I was on Community Board 10 then, and certainly carried that momentum and made sure that when I visited last year, that I saw 15. the conditions also, and I called the attention to the conditions and made sure that I funded the difference to make sure that our officers also have a training facility that they deserve. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about funding NYPD, but it's Time. also making sure that they have all the resources to be trained and experienced. Ms. Marmorado? You still didn't answer the question. What's that? She still didn't answer the question. I'm the, saying the I'm math not is not laughing. Here. The, the question Sorry was, that you're not in The question math, was, was it replacing uh, officers who had left? Right, that's what your yes, question was. Yes, I have been uh, fulfilling and asking for officers even before then, so that's it. I mean, okay. what else do you want me to say? Thank you. Uh, the, um, uh, let's get to, uh, you know what, let's do this. Um, let's just extend the uh, question about crime. We'll give you each 30 seconds and talk about bail reform. Advocates say that people released on bail are returning to court at high rates and there's no evidence that it's contributed to an increase in crime, but there's a lot of concern in the community that it's uh, allowing um, a crime to um, perpetuate, so to speak. Uh, Ms. Marmorado, you can go first. We'll give you each 30 seconds to do yeah, it. Yeah, there's no accountability in the city. Uh, nobody, people are committing crimes, getting out and committing more crimes. And we don't deserve to live in a city like this. For example, my office, there was a violent crime at my office where somebody threw a garbage can right through the front window. And he was not, he was arrested, but he was released. And I, in order to have him be accountable because he has mental issues or he has some type of challenges in life, they're looking to set him free. And if I don't push a felony on him, which it was over $500, so it would end up Time. being a felony, he, he's going to be set free. He won't be able to get the services that he deserves and needs to have. Right. And we um, need to fight it. Ms. Velasquez? Certainly, I would like to remind everyone that bail reform is a state issue. And what we need to really work on is making sure that we're talking about, if we're talking about mental health, then it is funding the facilities, making sure that we're actually funding our hospitals, which I have record investment seconds. in our hospitals to make sure that we're meeting the, the mental health needs. I've pushed for record legislation to make sure that we're taking care of everyone's need, especially when it comes to mental health and working with the chair of mental health, Linda Lee, on delivering those uh, needs. L let's just uh, let you each uh, answer this question. We're almost out of time. Um, Ms. Velasquez, plans are being finalized for the city's congestion pricing plan. Are you in favor of the concept of charging drivers below 60th Street in Manhattan, Manhattan and using the funds for mass transit? And if you're uh, reelected to the council, what modifications would you recommend? 30 seconds for each, and then we'll do closing statements. I'm against congestion pricing because it actually affects us here the most. Um, I made an op-ed about this because at the end of the day, you cannot charge our families another fee to get their lives, to get to their jobs, when in reality, you, they don't have any other option. Our public transportation in this uh, district is very poor. Seconds. And when we're really delivering, we have to make sure that we're looking at this as a whole and to 
give my families another uh, payment, Time. another cost is not fair. So I'm against it. Ms. Marmorano, 30 seconds for that. I don't agree with congestion pricing. I mean, I am a working individual. If I had to pay more money in order to travel to my location, it's absolutely ridiculous. They need to focus on what's happening in the subways, fix the subways, and then we could talk about things after that. We need safety. I went to the subway stations to hand out cards. People are jumping the turnstiles left and right. Nobody's accountable in this city. Thank you very much, um, both of you candidates. Um, we're time now for our closing statements. You'll each get one minute to do so. Um, as by prior agreement, uh, Ms. Velasquez, oh, excuse me, Ms. Marmorado gets the first. Okay. I am a woman of my word. I have never turned my back to my community. I am not funded by large corporations or unions. The only person that I am going to answer to is you, the community. If this is what you want in a council person, then vote for Christy Marmorado. Thank you, and thank you, Gary, for having me here today. Sure. Um, Ms. Velasquez, your final comments? Thank you, Gary, for tonight, and thank you, every viewer, for watching tonight. I, it's been a complete honor to represent District 13 since January 2022. I'm the daughter of the Bronx, born and raised here to Puerto Rican parents, to a community that has delivered to my dad a job and the American dream. The dream that actually got me here, the dream that put me to go into St. Catharines where they delivered care and compassion. And using that care and compassion, I was able to deliver food, PPE, seconds. and pantry items to our families in need during COVID. And now it's led me to deliver record funding to our NYPD for public safety, record funding to our hospitals for care, and record funding to our seconds. schools for quality education for our kids. What we're talking about is delivering not only results, but it's delivering hope, not hate, not divisiveness, and certainly not fear. This seat was never handed to me. I don't get Time. anything because my brother was there or my, because oh, my husband God. wanted me to. But at the end of the day, I fought against Your the establishment to get where I am. For the so thank you for okay, that. You were put into office, so knock it off. Um, well, candidates, while you Doesn't might not agree on election. everything in the yeah, dialogue, you're gonna, we'll talk about the board of elections. Let's going. see what's going to happen there. Uh, I know you. Yeah, all... I know you guys change, right? Or your change your, your husband, all right. your Let's husband see. employees get money that they gotta, don't remember yeah. giving. Yeah. I don't. Cash? We, we How dare you going. make those allegations against me? I don't know. It's in the Daily News. I didn't make yeah, an we'll allegation. Gonna we come out we in are going to thank all the participants. Please also thank our friends at the League of Women Voters in from the city of New York. And um, we thank both candidates and obviously the dialogue will go on and we remind everybody to vote on November 7th for the candidate of their choice. We'll be back next week with a fun show, totally different. We're gonna do a circus show because there's a circus coming to Bay Plaza. We'll do that next week. Good night. How dare you. Okay.